Right, well, good morning everybody. It's just done lunchtime here, North East. It's absolutely blown a hole. Uh, the sun's just starting to come over the roof there, lunchtime, so I'll have the sunshine for a, a good three or four hours, hopefully. Um, compared to the rest of the country, we've really been lucky up here. Getting off really lightly. Um, I'll focus for some more showers, heavy rain this afternoon. So, my intention is to get started here this, this morning, not lunchtime. I'm going to have a cup of tea and then get up the allotment this afternoon because I have got a, quite a lot to do. Um, I want to get cracking on the annuals. Now, we know how I like to start my annuals off. I do a lot in the autumn zone. Um, I like to forget me nuts, um, delphiniums, the, uh, the bellus daisy. We do all them. Now, the, I checked them this morning, uh, I checked them yesterday, I should say, and they're lovely young plants. Now the Bellis Daisy and that, uh, the Delphiniums, the Californian Poppy, I put all them out in the back bench and they're looking great on there, they're nice and cool out in the back bench. Plenty of fresh air, just a little bit of cover over the top in case we get any snow or uh, freezing rain. But the uh, forget me nuts are still inside, they are still in the cold polytunnel, they're going to be potted off. But what I want to do this morning, or this afternoon, I want to get up there and start sowing some seed, some annual seed. <coughs> now we have annual seeds. Go from your. <coughs> There's three or four different varieties. I'll point them all out this afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of. Uh, I want that bacon powder and I've just caught the back of my chest with it. Um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. But as I say, I want to get up the garden and uh, get, get started on some of the. Um, yeah, sowing some of the annuals. Now, the way I like to sow them, I mean, you can't just sprinkle them in the garden, rake them in on a warm soil, but you've got to wait until the soil warms up. Um, but what I like to do is I like to sow many pots, so you've got a nice strong plant or plant note. Now the um, the plants I've got up here, I can, pl I can start planting out in March if I don't get any cold weather. Uh, they're really strong, they're really healthy, and they're, 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 they're well hardened off, so I can, no doubt, middle of March I can start planting out in the garden. And they're absolutely fantastic, lovely strong plants. But I'll show you them when we get up there. <coughs> For the time being, there have been a few comments on the Facebook page about bugs starting off in the greenhouses. Once you put your heat on, once it warms up, you're bringing plants in. If they're going to have eggs um, or caterpillars, anything like that in them, they're going to start breeding. Um, and a couple of comments on the aphids. Well, aphids is an easy thing to get shot of. No problem with aphids. Um, it's when they get up there again. Bigger pests than that, then you have to start using uh, chemicals. But um, as you know by now, we never use chemicals, so if we can get away with it, we'll not use them. Um, so here's a, a quick method of uh, getting rid of the aphids. Now I've got my ordinary litre spray, I've half filled that with warm water. Now I've got a half a litre here of water out of the kettle, boiling water out of the kettle. Well, it's just starting, to, just starting to cool down there. I can just put my finger just, just next to you. Why I like to put boiling water in is because in here, I've been upstairs in the kitchen and I've added a teaspoon of <coughs> olive oil, or cooking oil, any cooking oil will do. And that's the idea of having the hot water. So when you add the, the, teaspoon, of, uh, the teaspoon of cooking oil, that will mix in well with the water. And of course, looking at the bubbles, you can see I've got me three or four drops of good strong washing up liquid. Mix that well in. And what I've added to that is a teaspoon, a level teaspoon of baking soda. You can get it in most shops. Baking soda, one of the easiest things to pick up. And the baking soda's in and of course don't forget a level teaspoon once again of Epsom salt. And get that in. Oh, that's starting to froth lovely. Good stirring up, well mixed in. <laughs> I'll keep the Epsom salt sandy because one of the things I have done today, or, or what I will be doing, is start to sow me chilies. <coughs> I've got a load of chili seeds sent up from um, <coughs> from one of the lads, <coughs> John Murphy, and uh, I've started sowing some of them. Some of them are just starting to pop through there. But I've been waiting for my seed from Mr. Fothergill's, and they've come yesterday. But it uh, absolutely poured down yesterday. It was freezing cold, so I wasn't going to come out in the greenhouse. So I've come out this morning just to try and get these sown. And of course, what I have been waiting for is my celery. So I'll get my celery done today. But on about the chilies and the peppers, 
the Epsom salts. When your fruits are on, I always go around at least once a week and give them a good spray of the Epsom salts. That calcium and it helps them really build them plants up, the fruits on them, and it uh, really helps them to grow. So that's another little tip. But uh, these are little things you can pick up from the shop, quite easy. So we're ready to go. We've got our we we'll boiling water, we've got our olive oil, cooking oil, just a teaspoon, a tablespoon, we've got our Epsom salts and we've got our baking powder. Now into the, the mixer with that, and there we have it, lovely, now it's just come up nice to the litre mark, I'll put that spoon down there because I'll no doubt I'll let it take all these utensils battle up, otherwise I'll be getting myself uh, get myself wrong. Now, into your spray. Now let it cool down. Do, do not attempt to spray your plants with boiling water because you do the more damaging enough. Now, I'm spraying that on my hand and that's just warm, that just look warm. Because the, the water that, that was in the, the spray was just lukewarm. It wasn't boiling water, it was just lukewarm. So that's just lovely. I can just spray them plants with that. Now the idea of the washing up liquid and the, I, <coughs> the idea of the cooking oil, mixing them with water, it's going to stick with the plants. It's going to adhere to the plants. So any aphids that's crawling under the leaves or on top of the leaves, and that's going to kill the aphids. No problem. It should be okay. To, it should be beneficial to all the insects that you want to keep in, like the bees and stuff like that. I never spray through the day anyway. I always spray early in the morning or the last thing at night if I can get away with it. I know sometimes it's not feasible. You know, you you go to the plot when you want to be, when when you get there. You've got if you're working and whatnot, um, and you've got to get the jobs done while you're there. But uh, if you can, early morning and late evening. But that's a good day. Get a good shaking up, a good spray. <coughs> In fact, I'm going to spray them croissants with it now. Because what I did notice on the croissants, there was some caterpillar when I took the cuttings a couple of weeks ago. So that's gonna that's gonna cure them. So I hope that helps. As I say, it's a good little mixture. Um, now my other sprays, a lot have been a lot of comments about them. Uh, the, the chamomile tea. Well, it's a it's a great um, way of um, antibiotic antibacterial in it uh, mixed in with <coughs> antibacterial, I should say. I will, will keep saying that, antibacterial, and it's, a, it's got some great um, methods of controlling um, moulds and funguses and stuff like that that you get on your, on your compost early on. So if you're spraying with a bit of chamomile tea, hopefully it should keep all that away um, and stop them from dampening enough. Just puts a bit of uh, puts a bit of soapy cover on them and a bit of, uh, as I say, a bit of chamomile tea mixed in with it. And spray them. I always like to spray my ceilings as they come through. I'm <coughs> just lifting them lids. Now if you remember, I talked about sowing a few early tomato seed. Um, I think I put them in a fortnight ago, and there they are, there's the elbilly. Now they grew absolutely fantastic um, last year. So what I want to do this year, I want to try and see how they come way early. I've got plenty of these seed. Um, there's some lovely little strong ones there. There's a couple of little weaklings down the side there. I always like to pull them away and just leave the strong ones in. Um, that one's starting to bend over a little bit, but uh, that's just that's just damp to the field. It's not wet, so I'm going to put a little bit of water on there because from underneath the tree and just um, let them take that water off. But for the time being, they're okay. I'm, I'm quite happy with them. Just let them grow on. I'm never in a hurry to put tomatoes up. Um, I always like to try and get them a decent size, and that sun is absolutely breaking it. As I say, as if it wasn't for the wind, you, w you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't credit. And these are red Thai chili, and s these are ones I got of uh, John Murphy, and they're uh, already they're off. Of course, these have been on the heat mat, um, and these have only been in a week. I was you can see a little bit of water dripping out the bottom there, but that's just condensation. That's been in the um, on the top. I like to take these lids off at least once a day. And just let them run off, let the water run off before I put them back on. And of course, I haven't got them fully closed. I've got, I've got them left open just a little bit, just to let some air in. But uh, I'm well pleased with them. That's come, come away really well. And of course, I've got the long jaw chili, which I got off. I think they're Dean Hoods. 
um, but they've grown away smashing. I'll give these before I knock off the night, I'll give them a good soaking because they look like it. Everything looks like it could do with a good drink, so I'm going to. When you've got plants under cover, you, you've really got to check them and keep an eye on them. Um, day in, day out. Now oh, they're, they're growing really well. Nice, strong little plants there. Um, they're Corfu. Now oh, I'm sure I've got them from Mike Street. So if you're watching Mike, well, that's the second year ones. I got a really fantastic crop of them last year. But if you remember, I did sow these cold because I had about six or seven varieties that I was trialing. And what I did, I sowed them all cold. <coughs> Just a cold zone in the greenhouse, no heat whatsoever. Um, under a bit of fleece, under a plastic container in the greenhouse. And they were late in coming up because I didn't plant the tomatoes out until the uh, middle of May, middle of the end of May. And uh, we got some lovely tomatoes off them, but one, one of them I tried was the Corfu one. Now I had a look through my me, um, me files and of course <coughs> I seen it was Mike Street that I got them from. So if you're watching Mike, well there's a second lot of Corfu coming up. I'm going to grow them on this year, but I thought I'll try a few seed early and see how they, how they, um, how they respond to a little bit of heat. Which I say it's frost free in here, just a little bit of heat on, not much. Um, and I'm going to see how they're grown here because, uh, as I say, I grew them cold last year. I was really pleased with them. Really strong looking plants. And of course a fantastic crop of fruit. So I'm, uh, I'm going to see how they respond to a little bit of heat this year. And earlier, and earlier tomorrow, um, and of course what I'm going to do with them, I'm going to get them a soap and that now. Because they're looking a little bit dry there. So you just keep that checking your seeds. Um, that's one thing I, I always have to do is when I'm uh, is when I've got seeds on heat, I let it come in every day, especially if they're under covers. I very rarely let them go for longer, any longer than a day before checking them. Um, now the onions are sowed. If you remember, I showed the uh, the Spanish onions I sowed about four weeks ago, and there we are, they're romping away. Now they at what you call the crook stage. Now a lot of the big showmen will put them off at that stage. I never do, I just leave mine. If you remember, I sowed about 20, 25 onions per pot on that 7 centimetre pot. Now I'll leave them, I'll probably leave them till I get that size, till I get 3 or 4 inches tall before I'll even think about putting them off. They're nice and green, they're nice and strong, and they're just grown away really slow. There's no special heat to these, uh, like the big growers do, there's no lights on them. And they just tick away really nice. No hurry for them, no races for them this year for the onions. I'm just letting them grow away nice and slowly. But uh, yeah, I'm well pleased with the way things are going. Uh, my little tubers that I brought in, and they've got some little red eyes on there. That's the daily tubers. They've got a couple of little red eyes there, so that tells me that they're going to start and send some shoots up soon. So pleased with them. And of course the croissant cuttings that I took, <coughs> I've had them on a heat bed for a, just over a week and they're, they're looking, they're starting to perk up just nicely. I'll give them another spray. I've took them off the heat now <coughs> and they're just there. I've took the cover off them completely. So they're just grown away really nice. I'll just let them get on with it now and hopefully within the next couple of weeks they'll be rooted and I can start there. Uh, take them up the garden where it's nice and cold, nice and cool I should say, and uh, pot them off. Right, so that was that. As I say, uh, yeah, I've got tomatoes to sow, but I'm not going to be in too much of a hurry. Because uh, I've got about six varieties this year to go in. So that's all the chilli seed that I got from um, uh, from John Murphy. Once again, John, thanks very much. As I say, I've sown um, three different kinds of chilies and three different kinds of peppers. Uh, I'm looking for the other ones. <coughs> that seem to be... I seem to be lost with the peppers. That big one has under there. And I think, yeah, the chilies at the front here. Yeah, they're the red Thai chili and the yellow scotch bonnet. So I've got two there. I've got two varieties there that's coming through. And I've got the long jaw chili. And of course, I've got the big. <coughs> I've got the big red peppers that I got off John. In the corner, yeah. They, they really are sown. I only put them in a couple of days ago. So what I what I mean to do this afternoon is to get the um, to get a Toro Rosso in, 
<coughs> and get the, the Californian one they're in. <coughs> no, peppers are easy enough to soak. <coughs> oh, that bacon powder has really got to get in the back of my throat there. Once again, I just use it when I'm sewn. I just use a multi-purpose compost. But when I'm sewing up the allotment, when I'm sewing the annuals, I'll be using my homemade compost. Because uh, you get them a taste of the soil long before you have to plant them out in the garden. And I find they grow away really well. The only difference is, you're going to have weeds growing through. But the, I think that the annuals come away that quick. You only, you'll only get a few weeds anyway. And uh, I think they grow away that quick and it, it doesn't really matter. So I've well soaked that with a spray once again. When I'm sowing seedlings, I like to give it a, a blast of uh, chamomile tea. <coughs> nice and moist. And then the chilli. Which is, well, I'm going to have to watch this because the yellow scotch bonnet. I'm going to have to watch these because uh, if you watched my video the last time, I'll show you how I bought my lips just by licking the envelopes. God, that was about there. Uh, that was about a, a two-hour stint on that before they actually started to cool down a bit. There they come. Just lay it on the top. I like to put about five seed. There's actually there's only a couple left in there now, so I think I'll put them ones back in. So that's fine for me. I've got seven seed in there, <coughs> and that's perfect. Just sitting on the top there. And then once again, a little bit of compost. A little bit of perlite mixed in with it. And just lightly covered. And that's how I like to sow my chilies. And of course, they'll go on the heat mat. We'll make a space for them. We'll shift a few of these bits and pieces around. <coughs> or they can just sit on a bench in here in the greenhouse where it's frost free. As I say, the temperatures really drop below 50 in here. And they can go on a tray with a little bit of water in and a covering over and they'll grow away just as, just as well. I'll have to stick a marker in there before I forget so I know exactly where it is. There's nothing left in that envelope. So I'll move the moon with that. So I've gotten I've gotten two zones out of that, that yellow scotch bottom. I've got three or four different ones to do. <coughs> I've got a tall rosso to sew, and I've got my celery to sew. Now my celery I'll just sew on a small tray, a half size seed tray, I've got some down here somewhere. That is the one there. Take my glasses out. My celery I can sew in there, half size seed tray. Level it off, sorry about that, level it off, nice and moist, well watered, and then I'll sprinkle a little bit of perlite over the top of it, and that, that'll be it, that's the celery. So, that's two or three jobs I've got to get stuck, on, stuck into this afternoon, <coughs> I'll get them done before I get up the plot. It's blackening over now, we'll focus for some really heavy rain um, this afternoon, I just hope the winds aren't going to be too strong as they put, off, put us off from the filming. But uh, we'll see. And uh, if we kind of get the film done, then we'll have to wait until tomorrow. I try like to try and get out on a Friday night um, with what we've been doing at the plot. Made a lot of progress on the shed up there this week. Um, while it's been raining, I've been nipping up in half an hour here and a half an hour there. I've managed to get all the glazing done, get all the windows into the new shed. Um, I'm going to attempt to put the new door on on Sunday, but it's a big heavy door, so I need a hand with that. So fortunately, I'll, I'm going to ask a brother-in-law to come up and give us a hand put the generator on, put the big electric saw on, and if I've got to do any cutting, I can do it there, I can do it outside easy enough. <coughs> but that's a job to do on Sunday. But I'll show you when we get up there anyway. For the time being, I'm going to go inside, have a quick cup of tea, bite eat, and then we'll get ourselves up the plot, and we'll get sewn some annuals. Okay, I'll see you up there soon. Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Once again, I've managed to get up here from, uh, from down home. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful up here, sun shining, but unfortunately the wind is uh, starting to pick up now. And of course we're all focused for heavy wind and heavy rain again this afternoon. 
so let's get sharp up sharpish and uh, get the video finished where I've got the chance. Oh, uh, what I have been doing this last day and this last week, I've been caught up for an afternoon in between showers and I've managed to get uh, get all the windows glazed in the new shed. Uh, they're all in and of course I've got a big double door to fit on there on Sunday but I'll not be able to manage that myself so I'm, uh, I'm going to ask uh, the brother in to come up and give us a hand with that. I might need cutting so I might have to put a generator on and uh, get, a, um, get a nice cut with the uh, electric so. But yeah, I'm, I'm chuffed with that, I've got it all glazed. Of course there's nothing done inside, I've got all the shelves and all the fences to build inside. But once I get the front water tight and the door on, at least I can work, work in there quite comfortable once the, um, <coughs> once the weather turns bad. If it's raining I can get myself in there. Of course my greenhouse is still in the same place. That hasn't budged with all the rain. Say the winds have been absolutely horrendous here. But uh, it's a gorgeous sunny afternoon. Uh, if I can say this is me, this is a job I've got to do tomorrow once Roger comes up. I say that's fit the gutter. What I've managed to do, I've managed to get a bracket on the end, on, on either end, and put a line through. Uh, so I get a nice level, and I'm going to drop it down at one end, so I get it, I get it run into the barrel. Uh, and that's uh, that's a job for tomorrow. I've got a bit more canvas to fit on the front, and then I'll get the get the guttons fixed on, and then I'll be barreling and it'll be great. We'll start start harvesting more rainwater from the new shed. But uh, still a bit of a tip along that far corner there, but. Uh, there's some big sheets of uh, marine ply there where I'm intent to do that as they cut all that up and that's off the old chicken runs that were pulled down at the far end. It's about 10 year old that but it's, it's still good stuff so what I'll do is I'll cut it up into sections and I'll lay it down on the new floor in the shed so it'll be, be a nice solid there, uh, nice solid floor in there. But yeah, what have they moved with that? And just have a little wander down here. Uh, spring cabbage of course have been getting eaten away by the, the pigeons. I never got my net over this. Uh, which I should have done last year. What I have been doing is getting up and down and getting a few bags of uh, horse manure from the stables. Uh, and uh, these are the last fruit trees to be done. These need doing, so we'll get these done. And then I'll get the fruit trees done in the polytunnels. I've got the cherry tree and I've got the peach tree in there to do, so uh, we'll do that. So I'm just going to work my way through these, um, through these Japanese onions before I go inside, okay? Right, well that's a little bit better inside here. It's, uh, it's still windy, but at least once you get inside, you can, uh, you can start doing some of the jobs that they uh, need doing. And of course, this week one of the main ones is to start on the annuals, my potted annuals. And if, you ever, if you go back last year, and uh, I like to sow some of my annuals, um, in the autumn time, so I'd say sow them around about the August time, potting them off in September, October in the small pots or boxes and overwintering them and that way you get a nice strong plant in here. It's just a, just a little example. Remember the larkspur that I, I sowed? Well they've been pricked off into little pots and there uh, into small modules and then at the run just transplanting them into bigger pots later on and that's the uh, that's what you can expect this time of the year. Now I've just brought these inside just to show you because what these are doing are just sitting out in the back border which is right over the back of the garden there just a little bit of cover over the top, bit of plastic and nothing on the sides, it's open to the weather and they're absolutely corporate, it's nice and strong, nice and green really healthy looking plants and they were just overwintered in the polytunnel all year all of the winter <coughs> I should say and they, they've come through really well the Bellis Daisy that were potted up fine young plants, now they can go into the garden in March and you get a beautiful spring flower from them of course they've been perennial they come back year after year after year and they're quite easy to grow um, you get you pick a packet of bellas up for a couple of quid in the shops and you get about a thousand seed and if you start them off at the right time late summer, early autumn and overwinter them over in the polytunnel of the greenhouse and you get a fantastic plant like that you'll pay 80, 90 pence in the shop for one of them easy and of course, you grow them yourself, you can have dozens and dozens for a sake of a couple of pounds and a bit of work. See, that's where we like to grow ours. And once again, the California poppies, we've got two or three trayfuls of them. And they're perennial, they're quite easy to self-seed and they'll self-seed all over your garden. And they'll give you an absolutely fantastic display of poppies. 
Right through the sewn ones. Great. So, there's just two or three of them what we like to grow. Now, I'll be sowing annuals now. I like to sow a few, few of my annuals now that I don't like to overwinter. Uh, cosmos is one of them. I don't like to overwinter Cosmos because it's quite a tall plant and it can be, it can be quite big. So, I don't be sitting with big plants in the, in the polytunnel in midwinter like this February. Um, they need to be out in the borders. Fortunately, we haven't got that much room. But like I say, Cosmos are that easy to grow. Um, and I'll be setting the pack of them up today. Once again, uh, cornflower, that's another good one. I've got one, two, three different kinds of cornflower. I've got the blue, the black, and the, the Miss Jekyll. So we'll, well, there's four, five different kinds there. But what I might do with them, I might put a, mix a couple of the blues, and that's a polka dot variety, which is all kinds of pinks, reds. Um, I might mix the two blues together, and keep that one separate, because that's a lovely display. Uh, cornflower, that's so easy to grow. Um, Lovatra, another one of my favourites. I, I only grow one pack there for myself. They're a lovely um, flower found in the summer garden. Um, quite tall, it can grow up to three foot, but um, really easy to grow. The station, for your baskets, for your pots, also have a couple of packets there. Um, the sweet pea, uh, Nigella, that's another good one, Miss Jekyll. No, blue, no, we've got zinnia here. No, zinnia are completely different. Uh, the summer floral ones, the zinnias and the dahlia seed. Uh, I've got three packs of zinnia there, but I'll be sowing them completely different from the annuals. So what we'll do next week, and the start of next week's video, we'll go in the melon house where I've got that little heater on and just kept it a frost free. And we'll do a, we'll do a, a sowing of the zinnias and the dahlias, the pom poms, which I grow every year. I know I've got me, I've got me tubers down home in the greenhouse and the shoots coming away from them. I'll be taking cuttings from them, but they're completely different from your uh, from your bed and dahlia. Your bed and dahlia is completely different. That's just there. Uh, you grow them from seed just for um, a small uh, small flower for the beds and that's all they are. There's nothing compared to the big giant ones which we'll be taking cuttings off around about March and April time. And some of the lads on the on the YouTube channels I'll take their cuttings now. They've had the probably had the tubers on um, on heat since about December. Well um, as I say I didn't have any heat on December. I didn't have any heat on in January. It was back in January before I even started putting mine on. because uh, I never had no leaks or onions there all winter so I was quite happy leaving the heat off. But uh, mine could have been on the on the heat in December. I will be doing it next year. Um, because what I intended it was that the fuchsias I've sent away for. I'll be putting a lot of fuchsias in on the heat. Uh, a lot of croissants on the heat in in December and hope for lots of early cuttings for next year. Um, so once again we'll carry on with them. We'll get the um, the dahlias and the zinnias done completely different method. I'll show them in the trees and I'll show you how I'll do mine next in the next video. Um, stocks, flocks, asta can all be done exactly the same way. And cosmos, of course cosmos is one of the uh, one of the wife's favourites and there's loads of different kinds of cosmos. That's a, a lovely one, that white cups also mixed. Now cosmos will show them exactly the same as what I will do with the um with all the other ones, with the cornflowers and the nigella. And it's, it's quite an easy it's quite an easy job. Um, all I have to do is to get a full tray, which I'm already getting ready. Now this is my own compost. You can use your multi multi purpose compost if you want. Just make sure you've got a good bit of sharp sand with. Uh, this is my own compost. You know, it's um, <coughs> it's mixed with um, the homemade compost out of the bins, uh, multi-purpose compost, sharp sand, and a couple of handfuls of bone meal. That's my mixture, and I've stuck with it for years. But we will get a lot of weeds growing up amongst these with my own compost because it's not heat treated, it's not sterilised, as I've explained in videos before. I never sterilise my compost. I like to keep all the, the bacteria in there, the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria, and I think it's just the even itself out. Um, if I do get any diseases later on, I can come back them with the, a few sprays and that, which I've talked about early on in the video. But uh, what I've done with the pots, just a small cup, and I've filled it three quarters of the way up. So they're already pre soaked, give them a good soaking. You don't have to, if you haven't got trays, you can use bread trays just the same. And what I would do is it, line up with a sheet of polythene and your bread tray, put four three newspapers inside, 
And then use paper just that, like a blonde paper, and you can stand all your plants on there, pour your water in, and your plants will get water from down below. I water everything I mean from down below if I can. Uh, a lot of these are hardy now outside, so they can, get, they can have a good water over the top of them. But as long as it's not water from outside in the barrels, because they need to be cleaned out, they need to be emptied out, and fresh water put in them. I always try to stay that as much as I can. If you're using water out your water cans, just make sure it's nice and clean. This butt here was cleaned out a week ago, fortnight ago, and it's nice fresh water put in it. <coughs> it hasn't been overwintered, because that's when all your algae's build up, your pathogens, and uh, you know they can, make, they can have a, a disastrous effect on the young seedlings. So that's what tree is sorted. It's just getting on with the plants now. And once again, the cosmos is <coughs> such an easy seed to grow. And it'll tell you on the back of your pocket once again. It'll give you it'll give you an idea of how many seeds you've got. Yeah, uh, somewhere in there. <laughs> and I always have difficulty <coughs> trying to find out where it is. Not to worry, we'll have a. Because you can usually work out by the amount of seed you got by your pots. So I've got um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, 24 pots in the tray there. <coughs> and I'll tip the, tip the pocket out. There's quite a few there. And I can quite easily just put one or two, even three seedlings per pot. It's a easy job to do, not hard. Just make sure your compost is nice and moist. <coughs> Excuse me. Just make sure your compost is nice and moist. And just take your time working your way through them. What I like to do with these is that once again take a handful of your compost and add a little bit of perlite to it. There we are. There's a few extra seed there, so I'll just dot them around in a couple of the pots. I think I've only got a couple in, and them should even them out just nicely. Now I said, that's a full tray of cosmos in there, 24 in a pot. <coughs> and just take a little bit of compost with some pearly mixed in, and a quarter of an inch on the top of it. Cover them over. Now these can just go and sit. Yeah, put them in a cold frame. You haven't got a greenhouse? Put them in a cold frame. Make sure that spot. These will go in the bottom polytunnel. It's nice and cold in there. The nets are on. There's plenty of fresh air blowing through. What they do want is any heat. None whatsoever. They want to be completely cold. And there we have it. Go trade cosmos. Once again, don't forget your packets. I'll put a marker in that later. Stick a marker in. And that goes sit on the um, that goes sit on the benches now in the in the bottom polytunnel where it's nice and cold. Um what I did what I did so um, the other week. And there's uh, there's some more of the um, the plants. This was the uh, forget me nuts that were planted last year. Now they in the modules, they were planted in the modules, and I think by now, just by gently tugging on them, they're well rooted. Yes, yeah, so oh, lovely, fantastic, that lovely little root ball on them. I'm moving over them. So Roger can get cracking them next week and get them potted off into six or seven centimetre pots and put on the trees. I'm moving over them, so that's them done. <coughs> What we did do was the calendula, and that's the ones potted off from when we sowed these last year. They were potted off in the cups, exactly the same thing, but now the cups have become full of roots, so they'll get potted off in the black pots, in the six or seven centimetre pots, and they'll be put planting out around the polytunnels, March and April, and I get a nice, nice orange or yellow flower, it's going to trap all the hole flies down into the greenhouses, of course, by our pollinators. And that's, that's the whole idea of it. I have started doing a few early sowings. I've sowed some, uh, as I say, with the larkspur. We sowed these last year. I've already sowed a trade full of larkspur, and they're over there. Um, broadcast them on a, on a big standard tray, so they're in. And what I did do, 
last week once again. There's the calendula there. And these are the, the home sale sheet. So we'll show two three of them. They'll be for cracking up for family and friends. We've got, uh, we've got all the plants we need for around about the greenhouses for putting them amongst the borders. And that, um, that keeps them nice and free of pests and that brings, brings all the good uh, benefactors all the beneficial um, insects in. <coughs> That's why we like, we like to put plenty of flowers down. But I'm over the moon the way things are growing. It's still a bit cold at the moment. As I say, it's, it's only in the middle of February, so we've got plenty of time yet. What I intend to start on next week is the brassicas. Now, I normally like to wait until about March time. So, I mean, even next week, it's yeah, I think it's the end of April, it's the end of February next week, so I might, uh, I might skip next week and do it the week after. I'll be in the first week of March. I'm never in any hurry whatsoever to, uh, to sow my to sow my brassicas. Um, <coughs> as I keep saying, timing is everything. If you're going to sow them uh, now, you're, you're going to be pricking them off in a week to a fortnight's time. But they will come through pretty easy, even in the cold greenhouse. Uh, no heat whatsoever. They'll come through pretty easy. Uh, because your daylight's getting longer and your days are getting a little bit warmer, so it doesn't take long for them to pop through. You're going to pot them off into pots, single pots, and then you're going to have to grow them on. I know down south you might get away with planting them a little bit earlier than what we do up north. Up north it's really long about the late April time, um, beginning of May before we even think about planting any brassicas outside, um, before the risk of frost is all past. So you're still talking, um, you've got all through March and halfway through April, so you've got six weeks to go yet. So I, when I like to plant mine as owner, I like to plant the seed, give it a week or a fortnight for it to grow through a decent size for pricking off, that's two weeks, and then give them at least three weeks in the cups that will be transplanted into in the small cups like that, and then get a full root ball on them. So give them another three weeks, so that's five weeks. So I'm looking at the first the second week in March before I even sow my seed in that. That time, that time will work out just right for us up north. The end of end of April, beginning of May, planting out outside. Get your time and make your seeds. Don't be in a hurry to try planting everything at once. It doesn't get you anywhere, and it doesn't, you don't gain any brownie points with it. Um, as I say, the weather at the moment it's up and down. The sun's out, and it's it's really warm in here. It's actually 66 in here, cold greenhouse with the sun shining on it. So that'll that'll tell you the seeds will shop. They um, bounce through. But at the same time, your night temperatures are going to drop right down. It's still cold of the night time, so a bit of fleece, handy wherever need be, you know, keep it handy for frost and that. Because it will damage your seedlings. So just don't be in too much of a hurry. <coughs> As I say, down home I've got chilies in. I'm going to start a few tomatoes up next week. I did grow a few a couple weeks ago. Um, and they're just popping through there now. But they um, I'll make a good start next week on the zinnias, the dahlias, and a few other bits and pieces. But uh, as I say, as far as um, the rest of the flowers are concerned, they can wait. They can wait well until the middle of March. Um, I might get out and sow a few early carrots. <coughs> well, that'll be it. But for the time being, we're quite happy to just keep marching on with the uh, with the annuals. And uh, as I say, some of the summer perennials we'll put in in a couple of weeks' time. For the time being, I'm going to knock off. I hope you're fair. I hope I've given you a few more tips this um, this video. <coughs> As I say once again, thanks for all the subscribers. I'm over the moon with uh, with last last week's news. With the top of the 1,000, uh, I'm just hoping there's a lot of people are getting there uh, getting some good tips over. I always like to see the comments down below on the uh, on the YouTube. But once again, if you uh, if you cannot wait for the videos to come out, jump over onto our Facebook page, which is uh, Jeff Holman on the Plot, and uh, send your friends request, and we'll get you signed up on the Plot, and you can chat away with us every night. I'm on most nights on the laptop, uh, posting and uh, answering different questions that the most people. Um, but yeah, as I say, if you can't wait for the videos, we'll try to get one out every week. Um, over the next few months, we're going to be really busy. As I say, I've got a shed to finish next week. If I get that finished, I'll be over the moon. The next big job is trying to get these two new greenhouses that we've got housed, make some new um, make some new surrounds for them, some new bases, that'll be new pathways, <coughs> new trenches, 
a lot of work so I'm just going to pierce myself right through the summer try and get a couple of jobs done and that's as well as doing all the planting the seed sowing, the planting, the potting off and the growing um, there really is loads to do so we're just going to take my time and uh, hopefully it'll be a good new year for us um, it's taken us three years to get back on my feet again um, I can feel my strength coming back most days I'm, I'm raring to go and to get up and do a little bits and pieces but uh, as I say tomorrow hopefully you want to get the, the curtain finished on there and then get the new door on on Sunday and I'll be on the moon Roger I want to get started painting up on the sides get all painted up and then we'll crack on outside in the, in the garden because in a couple weeks time I'll be sowing parsnips I'll get them in I'll let you put them in on the first week of March um, sow the parsnips and I might have a few red onions to print so I'll, I'll get them done but plenty of Spanish ones down home growing, some large Spanish, so uh, I'm putting a lot of them in the garden. We'll keep an eye for teachers coming through, we've got two tunnels full of potatoes, but uh, at the moment, no sign them yet, but with this heat, they'll not be long coming through, so we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll look forward to that. Anyway, I'm going to crack on here, I've got a lot more sort to do, so I'm going to get as many of these Daniels as I can do, and I'll just set up on here, in a cold greenhouse, um, or in the bottom polytunnel, cold polytunnel, and just uh, let them grow on. I've got plenty of trees in here, but these are for the these are for the zinnias, the um, the pom pom dahlias, all them seeds, all them will go under a little cover. And of course the brassicas will start off next week. But uh, plenty of time for that. But I'll see you all again in a week's time, as I say. Enjoy the show, and thanks again for all the new subscribers, um, and thanks for everybody that's uh, given your support over the last year and a bit. Okay, so I'll see you all again soon.